Hey everyone, what is more exciting than a Raspberry Pi project? What's even more exciting than working with EOS? How about an EOS software project running on top of a Raspberry Pi? I present to you the DIY Raspberry Pi EOS hardware wallet. Okay, a few hardware components that are required. I sourced all mine in Australia from Core Electronics. Raspberry Pi Zero with the GPIO headers, the Adafruit OLED bonnet with the GPIO header connector, a little case to keep the Raspberry Pi safe, and an 8 gig micro SD card. Onto assembly, the Raspberry Pi Zero fits snugly in the little case, and then just carefully put the protective screen on top. And then when you put the OLED bonnet on, just be very careful as the yeah. pin headers can be a bit fragile if you're a bit too um, hard with them. So just gently squeeze it on and you'll feel it connect. And that's it, snugly in the case, nice and protected. All right, let's get started. Uh, the first thing is we'll just go to the Medium article um, that was written by Liquid EOS. Um, that has the whole guide and partnership with Scatter um, on how to actually create your hardware wallet and install the appropriate software. Uh, Liquid EOS are a Bancor backed EOS block producer. Um, you can also go to the Bancor protocol GitHub where you can get uh, the details and the source code of the actual software we're going to put on, but we're going to be putting a, a pre compiled image. Um, so you need to download that software, and I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and then you also need to um, get Scatter Desktop. So if you go to getscatter.com, uh, you can get uh, the, the beta uh, Scatter Desktop. And then you need something to write the image, and we'll be using Etcher, which works really, really, really well. So let's just open up Etcher. We select the image. And obviously, I've got my micro SD card in my little SD card reader, and that's the one, the 8 gig one that I showed you previously. And we are going to flash, I'm obviously, using a Windows box. Um, and it takes takes a little bit. Uh, once it's uh, finished flashing that um, that card, we'll take it out, put it into the Raspberry Pi Zero, soon to become a hardware wallet, and uh, and boot the device. So I've inserted the imaged uh, micro SD card into the side of the Raspberry Pi and I have plugged a USB cable into my computer into the Raspberry Pi Zero to give it power and also to communicate to the PC. It takes ages to boot, um, literally one and a half minutes to boot. So just uh, be patient. And the first thing it's going to want us to do for the first time is to choose a password and verify the password. We'll just do something simple. If you push down on the joystick, it takes you to the next line and the exclamation mark is the enter. And then we have to verify it. Okay, now it's gonna generate a seed and I've actually checked this. The seed and the key is different every time you do a new installation. Now, you obviously meant to write down all 12 words. Um, if, if I read correctly on the Medium post, it says that right now, um, it's actually not possible under the disclaimers. It's not possible to recover from a seed phrase just yet. I probably should have gone through this earlier as well. Uh, disclaimers saying that uh, you know this is definitely a testing software and testing hardware wallet that uh, it's not where you want to be putting your your main net keys on just yet and even now when we test we're going to be doing it on the crypto lions uh, jungle test network so only one key pair supported um, you know no hardware encryption as yet so yeah it's definitely it's definitely just for um, testing purposes right now all right, so it's going to go through the seed phrase twice or the seed words twice. And there is no way that I can see that you can just proceed through to the next 
um, through to the next section at all until um, until it's actually gone through it. So you just have to be a little bit patient. there. Presumably you would have written them all down. <laughs> all right. You've written it down and you would like to proceed. Yes. So now it's actually unlocked it and there is our public key. Okay, the next thing we need to do is actually install Scatter so we can interact with the hardware wallet. So if you go to the Scatter website, like I said before, to download Scatter Desktop Beta. Uh, so download it, I've got it on my desktop, and we'll just install it quickly. And then run it. And this is the first time it's been run. So we're going to create a new scatter. Oh, let me move it. It just wants a password. And it wants you to write down the mnemonic so you can recover your um, identity and say accept. And what do we want to call our identity? And we'll just say random, oh, random rabbit. We'll just skip that. All right, so there we go. We've got an identity. Now what we need to do is import the, the, the key from the actual wallet itself, or at least the, the public key from the wallet, um, because the private key is actually going to exist on the hardware wallet. So if we go through to blockchains, click on networks, sorry, click on accounts, import, hardware wallet, see how it comes up, scatter, liquid EOS, DIY, hardware wallet, and then we say, import hardware key obviously we are unlocked at the moment on the hardware wallet and there's there's our key so i'll just save that quickly for now because we're going to need to use that to create an identity on or create an account on the jungle test network don't forget to click save key pair and it'll throw an error because we haven't given it a name hardware wallet xx save key pair yes all right then we have to go and actually add a, a network itself so we have to add the jungle network before we can actually even progress with uh, the scatter we have to create that account on the jungle network so if you go through to the jungle testnet monitor and click on create account i actually created one already called hardware one and i have already saved that public key if I say create, it'll say it's already been created. So that would create a new account on the Jungle Testnet for you, bound through to that um, owner and um, active public key. And then the next thing we need to do is actually add some funds into the faucet. So go to the faucet or add some funds into your account from the faucet. Hardware one, send coins, and it'll they will send you like 10,000 coins, right? I've already, I've already uh, sent some through to that account just recently. All right, if we go back now to the scatter wallet itself, this is obviously geared to be running on mainnet. So we have to go and actually manually add the test net. So if we click on blockchains, networks, and this little new network button, we'll click on that. We're going to connect to jungle now. Jungle. Dev Crypto Alliance is the, the host we're going to connect to. And I know the port is 1348 and it's HTTP. And you can make sure that you connect into it by clicking on the fetch chain ID. And that's the chain ID, which is great. Okay. All right. If we go back to identities, blockchain, sorry, fetch accounts. 
and you can see they're the two accounts that we've got created. So we'll just choose the hardware one account that we've created and do a refresh. And you can see um, how much CPU network we've got available and RAM that we've got available. Now, let's use our hardware wallet. We'll do that by sending some tokens. So if we click on transfer, we'll use that account and we'll send 999 tokens through to a test account that exists on Jungle. And we'll just say test token transfer and send. So now it's getting the transaction ready. 999 tokens to test. We're going to accept it and it's going to query the hardware wallet to see if it has authority. And we can just say yes and it's going to sign the transaction. Give it a moment. Signing. take too long signed and we have a successful transaction and we can go and actually query that transaction on blocks oh not yet it takes a moment to get through <laughs> if we go to um, account info to history and you can see there we go token test transfer 999 EOS being sent and authenticated and given authority by the actual hardware wallet so I'm hoping that this has been um, helpful. It's certainly not mainstream yet. And I know that there will probably be more development that will happen um, on the Bancor protocol GitHub. But it's a starting point and certainly is a fun project for you to have a go at creating a, a Raspberry Pi EOS wallet. Thanks.